Hi everyone, thanks for listening in. My name is Nisha and I'm here to present some joint work done with Luca Magri at the University of Cambridge and Chi Chi Wang, who's also my PhD advisor at MIT. There's been a recent surge of interest in shadowing-based sensitivity computation, in which the is to compute the derivatives of long time averages of chaotic systems with respect to input parameters. In this talk, we'll be, we'll be introducing a small variant of this shadowing based, of these shadowing based methods into which automatic differentiation can be incorporated. And we'll also be downstream applications of the computed sensitivity for parameter selection problems and data assimilation. Our focus will be on a reduced order model that is popular in thermoacoustics. However, the algorithms themselves are more general and they can be used in a variety of chaotic systems. In fact, here I'm showing different examples of target computations of sensitivity analysis, specific space engineering. This is a large eddy simulation of the pressure at the exit of a jet engine. We may be interested in tweaking the shape of the nozzle exit so as to reduce jet noise. We may be interested in better design of turbine vanes or engine gas turbine engine parts based on information that is obtained from chaotic numerical simulation. In fact, chaotic sensitivity analysis can have even broader scope. We can become more specific about climate sensitivity, which is the grand question of how our long time averages in our Earth's climate system would respond to anthropogenic forcings, the increase of greenhouse gases, and so on. Um, and in these terms, we are interested in statistical or long-term averages, like the one on the left and not the one on the right, which is, which is a monthly average temperature over the United States. Whereas on the left, we see a 20-year uh, average of the map uh, over the map of the United States, which clearly shows a warming trend, whereas the one that might be a shorter term average is still cut up by statistical noise. So let us set up our problem. Um, we have a set of ODDs, some governing equation, DODD equals F of US, where U is a D-dimensional state vector and D-dimensional parameter vector. Uh, we'll discretize this problem. So little f is a time discrete version of the ODE. So it takes a state vector u and maps it to the next time step. And we'll also use the shorthand notation. The subscript always indicates the time. So fn presents f composed with itself n times. So it takes a state vector u and gives the state of the vector n time steps into the future. Uh, let's also introduce the scalar function of interest j evaluated along the state c1 and its time averages a time average is denoted using angular brackets of j subscript capital N, which is the time averaging window. Our quantity of interest is the derivative of the infinite time average of j. And we will soon see that this infinite time average of j does not depend on the initial state u0 but it only depends on the parameter. So a nice example to keep in mind, and which also describes what makes the system chaotic is shown here in this plot. So this lavender line is a chaotic map. By that we mean that if we take two points, X and Y, that are very close to each other, under four iterations of this map, they grow apart. And under seven iterations of this map, they grow further apart. And although both trajectories remain bounded within this interval zero to two for all time, they become exponentially decorrelated. This is the signature of one technical assumption 
we need to make is that the systems we consider are ergodic. What that means is that infinite time averages of quantities taken in ergodic systems do not depend on the initial condition. They only depend on the model. And uh, to illustrate this, these are simulations run by Chi Chi Wang. And you can also see videos of these simulations on his YouTube page. In both these, in both these plots, on the left hand side, we see billions of initial conditions evolve for a short time over here and for a very long time over here. And on the right, we see only one initial condition. This, these are all points generated along one trajectory. And in both these plots, the colors indicate the number of states that are found within that pixel in the square of over 2000 by 2000 pixels. So you can see that these two pictures look different after a short time evolution, but on a long time evolution, they look identical. What this means is that the probability distribution as seen by a single typical trajectory of the system is the same as the probability distribution of an ensemble of trajectories uh, of the system. In other words, the infinite time average along almost every trajectory, the almost here must be underlined, it becomes important data, is equal to the expected value with respect to a time invariant probability distribution on phase space, which is denoted as mu. And this mu only depends on the parameter s, uh, mu depends on the parameter s. It also depends on the state. And it is an invariant and a physically observed me probability measure. Uh, the other technical assumption is that we consider uniformly hyperbolic systems. What this means is that at every point in phase space, there is the tangent space, which has equal dimension as the phase space, can be to stable and unstable directions. The stable directions are directions in which if we apply an infinitesimal perturbation, the norm of that perturbation decays exponentially and unstable perturbations have decaying, exponentially decaying norm backwards in time. So this is visually on this attractor which lives on the surface of a sphere and the camera is aligned so that th there's only one unstable direction and the camera is aligned so that this green line is that unstable direction. There are two stable directions. One points outward because the attractor always lives on the surface of the sphere. So any perturbation you apply in the radial direction is going to decay exponentially in time. The other stable direction is the one that is moving around in blue. And you can see that that sort of is aligned in the direction in which the attractor filaments come together, which means that if you apply a perturbation in that direction, it's going to die out eventually. Now, going back to equipped with the knowledge of our mathematical assumptions, which are that we are, we are dealing with an ergodic chaotic system, which is additionally also uniformly hyperbolic, we can go back to our uh, quantity of interest, which is the derivative infinite time average of J. And typically in sensitivity analysis, the conventional methods are tangent and adjoint sensitivity analysis of finite time averages. So we may be tempted to just take this derivative inside and consider using a tangent or a set, an adjoint sensitivity analysis technique what the derivative is with the of a long but a finite time average of J. So this is the what is known as the tangent sensitivity, but Vn is the solution of a tangent equation, and V star n is the solution of an adjoint equation, and Xn is the parameter perturbation, and Xn star is the partial derivative of the object in uh, with respect to the state. Now this conventional tangent or adjoint sensitivity analysis does not quite produce the right sensitivities. In fact, the sensitivities it produces are exponentially growing with n, and therefore the answer to switching the, putting the derivative inside the limit is infinity. Whereas 
Well, derivative we are interested in is very much a bounded quantity because it takes the infinite uh, time average of j, which is also equal to the statistical average of j, and it measures how much the statistics change if we change the parameter. And in this linear response regime that we are interested in, the change in the statistics is not is, is a finite bounded quantity. Now, uh, this this failure of tangent and algebra insensitivity analysis is depicted here in this figure. And the x-axis is the time, and the y-axis are the norms of the various perturbations. So these are all infinite, infinitesimal perturbations. Uh, in blue is an infinitesimal tangent perturbation, but as you can see, it grows exponentially in time. And the, this is the same tangent equation can be computed using automatic differentiation in forward mode. And that is shown, and it lies on top of this tangent equation and also blows it exponentially. Similarly, the square of algebraic solutions and the same algebraic solutions computed using the also blow up exponentially in time, but backwards. And then final difference also increases exponentially in time, but the two trajectories used to compute the final difference are both bounded, and so it saturates after some time. So more sophisticated methods are needed to compute sensitivities in chaotic systems. And one of the first such sophisticated methods is due to Chi Chi Wong and Patrick Weigel, which came out in 2014, which is called least squash shadowing method. In this method, uh, the mathematical idea is that there exists a particular conventional tangent solution which does not blow up exponentially in time, and that is denoted as VSH. And then we can compute the sensitivity we are interested in by using this tangent solution that does not blow up in time. And the, and the mathematical justification for the existence of this shadow tangent solution is what is known as the shadowing lemma in dynamical systems. And so essentially, this sensitivity is computed as an ergodic average along this shadowing orbit predicted by the shadowing lemma which is an orbit of the true dynamics, which lies very close to a perturbed reference orbit for, for a long time. However, the sensitivity is not equal to the true sensitivity, which is given by this Wells linear response formula. And the reason can be understood visually by looking at this one dimensional example, uh, which we have seen earlier, where the perturb maps are represented using these orange, green, and red. And on the green line, on the right is shown the probability distribution of a typically observed trajectory starting from almost everywhere. And on the left is shown the probability distribution computed empirically along a long shadowing orbit. The shadowing orbit, as you can see, is an atypical which does not generate a typically observed probability distribution, which means that the sensitivities computed along the shadowing orbit are also incorrect. Nonetheless, in this example, there is only one direction and that is unstable. But in many examples where we have a high dimensional system, but with very few unstable modes, shadowing can still produce a reasonably accurate measure of the sensitivity. And we will consider one such example in our thermoacoustic system, uh, which will be the focus in the rest of this. But before I introduce the thermoacoustic system, I want to mention the key takeaways of this talk, which are that we are given this system, uh, a chaotic system of ideas, and we, are, we have this long-term average objective function, and our goal is to differentiate this objective function, the long-term average of the objective function. And we are using using a small variant of this least squares already popular least squares shadowing uh, uh, algorithm in a discrete framework that combines both the tangent and the adjoint versions of this algorithm. And we can exploit automatic differentiation in this framework, which for which the main advantage is that we can now extend this to complex systems where we don't have to supply the Jacobian and the Jacobian transpose, we don't have to uh, hand differentiate the primal system 
in order to manually compute the tan tangent and adjoint shadow in sorry tangent and adjoint solutions we can rather obtain them automatically using respect forward and reverse mode ad and further as i mentioned earlier we do consider a system in which this using shadowing is appropriate because we do get accurate sensitivities which can then be used for downstream applications which we demonstrate and in we introduce a new shadowing based data assimilation scheme so these are the takeaways and now we will move on to uh, describing this discrete tangent adjoint shadowing algorithm and i want to mention that all of this work uh, is available in this preprint if you are interested in more details now first i want to introduce the tangent and adjoint shadowing algorithm in a unified framework the main reference for this tangent uh, algorithm is and Shuning and Chi Chi Wang's work in this EP. The first step of this unified algorithm, where unified means referring to both the tangent and the adjoint algorithms at the same time. And the only difference is that the inputs to this algorithm, which are these matrices A and the vectors B, are given in the adjoint case in time reversed order. Otherwise, the same algorithm that is tangent shadowing can also be used for adjoint shadowing. So the, the main point in, in, in shadowing, the main point is that the shadowing perturbation is expressed in terms of the conventional tangent solution or the adjoint solution, which is written as Vn. And from it is subtracted some components which are represented using this vector AM along the unstable tangent of the adjoint subspace. Now QN is a matrix uh, which is an orthonormal basis for the unstable tangent of the adjoint subspace. To be a tangent basis if AM is the Jacobian and the adjoint basis if the AM is the Jacobian transpose and there's also a time reversal. And BM is the conventional tangent or the adjoint solution where Bn is Xn in the time or Xn star in the adjoint case. So the way the shadowing perturbations are computed in, in LSS is by solving this least squares problem, which minimizes the norm of the shadowing perturbation for obvious reasons. And also there is an additional constraint that is generated by the fact that the solutions must also satisfy this conventional tangent or adjoint equations. So by solving this problem, we obtain the coefficients am. And so the shadowing perturbation is determined. And just like in conventional uh, tangent or adjoint sensitivity analysis, the final sensitivity is then computed with a correction term when we are dealing with ODEs. So now let me introduce our chaotic system of interest in this talk, which is a reduced order model that is popular in thermoacoustics in uh, modeling an acoustic cavity with a heat source in, like the combustion combustion chamber of a gas and uh, of a gas turbine engine, for example. So this has a I hope you could hear the ringing noise. So this elegant demonstration that I was referring to is that of an open tube that is open at both ends and with a point source of heat inside shown here as an electric gauss. Um, gauss. Uh, once, the, once the gauss is, we hear this ringing noise because the acoustic pressure oscillations inside the tube are in phase with the heat released from this point source. So in uh, this model describes this in more detail. This is derived from the Navier-Stokes equation, inviscid Navier-Stokes equation, which, which, which is also linearized about the main flow. So Q dot is the heat released by a source that is at 
uh, point source at xf. Uh, we discretize this PDE spatially uh, using a Fourier Galakian basis, and this we obtain this set of ODEs where J are the modes of the velocity and theta J are the modes of the pressure. And UF uh, is the flame velocity, which depends, which, which um, influences the heat release rate. After a time delay, uh, which is modeled by this variable. And beta, which is also an important parameter, controls the heat release. Now, this thermoacoustic model has been studied extensively, and we in particular follow the model that has been studied by Hoon and Magri in this recent paper. As we mentioned, the ringing sound, which captures the intricate uh, interactions between the acoustic oscillations and the heat release rate uh, and the heat release rate at the source. And we have this set of ODEs, which we had from earlier. And in order to maintain the differentiability with respect to parameter, time delay parameter tau, we explain the set of ODEs by this dummy linear advection subsystem. Uh, because if we introduce this uh, t, flame velocity at t at the, as the left boundary condition, on the right boundary condition, out comes uf of t minus tau, which can then be used directly in the pressure modes. So then the system becomes memoryless as opposed to being a delay differential set of equations. Now, this heat release rate uh, is a nonlinear function, which as, a, as an astute observer can tell, we'll have a similarity at minus one. And like this problem, when we take the derivatives for these tangent and adjoint solutions, we model this using a smooth function near minus one, as done by Kuhn and Magri here. Now, as I mentioned, there is an intricate interaction between the heat release rate and the acoustic oscillations that gives rise to this noise or thermoacoustic instability. Uh, we see that this interaction changes, uh, varies while, widely when we change this heat release parameter beta. Shown here is a bifurcation diagram on which the y axis is an important objective function, uh, which is the time average of the acoustic energy, which is shown here. Uh, for very small values of beta, we hit a fixed point. And as we increase the values of beta, we get limit cycle oscillations, which are shown in this nice periodic attractor on the uf versus q dot two-dimensional plane. The visualization is uh, shown on this right column. And then this transitions into quasi-periodic behavior for which the attractor is visualized here, which has many uh, Lyapunov exponents, which are zero. And that transitions into chaotic behavior as we increase beta even further. And this is our regime of interest. And then if we keep increasing uh, beta even further, we get back the periodic behavior. And in this case, the attractor, you, which is visualized here, clearly looks like a tractor structure. So the other important objective function we are interested in is the Rayleigh index, the time average of which is shown as a function of beta. And uh, a chaotic regime, we have measured the Lyapunov exponents that uh, from, from index one to 20, the first 20 Lyapunov exponents are shown here. The first one is clearly greater than zero. Another one is very close to zero, which indicates the time derivative direction of the ODE corresponding to a Lyapunov exponent of zero. And the others are all stable Lyapunov exponents. So this is a system with just one unstable mode. This is system can also be verified to be numerically verified to be uniformly hyperbolic. Extensively, this is in Hoon and Magri's paper. And we've also done simulations where we get the time average of the angle between the covariant Lyapunov vectors. On the left is shown the angle between pairs of covariant Lepno vectors uh, tangent CLVs 
and on the right are the angles between the Adrian series, and we can see visually that although this is not a conclusive proof, we can see that this you know, this system behaves as if it was uniformly hyperbolic because these angles are bounded away from zero. Now, so in this case, we see that when we apply the shadowing algorithm that I described initially, the sensitivities that we get are very close to the truth. We know the truth because the system is low dimensional enough for us to just eyeball the sensitivities from the plot I showed you earlier of the time average of J, uh, the acoustic energy with respect to and the Rayleigh index with respect to beta. From here, you can see that the slope should almost be one and that's what we get minus one. And that's what we get from uh, tangent shadowing. And here we see it has to be between minus 3.5 and 4. And that's what we get from uh, tangent shadowing sensitivities. Similarly, we've also verified that the adjoint sensitivities obtained by shadow quite accurate. They're accurate enough for downstream applications. So this uh, application shows the minimization of acoustic energy, minimization of the time average of acoustic energy, which suppresses, which is the same as suppressing these thermoacoustic oscillations. Therefore, this is an important application. And uh, here we show on the plot of the time average of uh, acoustic energy versus beta, the path of optimization taken by using these computed shadowing sensitivities. Uh, as we can clearly see, the path taken is such that the acoustic energy is reduced in the shadowing regime, and then the system is forced out of the shadowing regime. The chaotic regime, sorry, is forced out, out, forced out of the chaotic regime into the quasi-periodic and finally uh, fixed point if we keep running the algorithm for longer. This uh, minimization procedure is just a proof of concept, and so we use a very simple gradient descent algorithm to change the parameter based sensitivities we obtain from shadowing. And we see that this example illustrates that it is shadowing sensitivities are capable of being used in an application for parameter optimization. Now we show another important application of data assimilation. Typically in data assimilation, functional goes something like this, where one part minimizes the mismatch between a reference trajectory and a background trajectory, which is some information about the state that we have from previously run data assimilation runs. And the second part minimizes the mismatch between the observations of some scalar function and what is simulated along these reference trajectory. Now, we use, we minimize this in, there are several variational data assimilation uh, algorithms out there that are even able to work with chaotic systems. And one such popular class of methods is called the assimilation in space methods, which is widely used in the weather prediction community. What we're introducing here is a method based on shadowing, which joins this class of methods. Um, so uh, the approach we take is that we minimize both these parts separately. So the observational mismatch is incorporated as the objective function for the shadowing algorithm. So we get the derivative of this, of the mismatch with respect to S, and that is used in a gradient descent loop to change the parameters to minimize the mismatch. And we also update the initial state by using the computed shadowing perturbations so as to always keep it close to the background. In this way, we are able to do both a state and a parameter estimation problem in such a way as to minimize the mismatch in both the observations and in the background state. Here are the results of applying this data assimilation algorithm in our thermoacoustic model. So and colors are the different numerical experiments that we ran in which we used synthetically generated uh, background and observations and the, the reference trajectory used in shadowing to start off the iteration uh, was a small perturbation from the, um, from the synthetically generated background initial. 
Now note that, and the black line here is the average over all the close to 200 numerical experiments. And we see that in all the cases, there is an average uh, prediction error, which measures the relative error in the observation um, when compared to the reference trajectory. The relative error increases by less than an order of magnitude, whereas judging by the value of the Lyapunov exponent that we saw of 0.2, this would be close to more than two orders of magnitude over the same uh, interval considered. So this is able to increase the predictability window of this system significantly. So let me conclude here by also by repeating the key takeaways of uh, one being that we introduced this small of the shadowing algorithm in this discrete framework that uses the same code for both the tangent and the adjoint um, solvers. And the code is available as a link um, in the documents along with the preprint. And also we have linked to other alternative shadowing that are recent methods that are works in progress more complicated than the shadowing methods. So in a way, this example illustrates that there are still some engineering uh, examples that are useful for engineering problems in which shadowing can be applicable, even though it is not guaranteed to convert. And particularly in this example, we've demonstrated computer shadowing sensibilities are accurate enough for downstream applications of parameter estimation and this new data assimilation problem. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me on the chat or send me an email at NISHAC, where C is from my, the first letter of my last name at MIT. I'll also type it on the chat. So yeah, thank you.